Now we'll go for something on uh, informal letters, personal letters. We've discussed regarding form of, uh, formal, we'll go for something on informal. Informal letter. An informal letter also referred to as a friendly letter because we write, it, write a letter to our friends, family and all. Also referred to as a friendly letter is a personal letter written to friends or relatives for personal communication and requires a casual or emotional tone. A formal letter should never be casual. There's no need for us to go for an emotional tone also in the case of a formal letter. Right? Just be official. Just be formal. But in the case of a personal letter, an informal letter, an informal letter requires a casual tone or an emotional tone. Writing to our parents, like maybe we may go emotional sometimes. Writing to our friends, we do it in a casual manner actually. Because we don't follow any kind of etiquettes and all while speaking to friends or while communicating with our, communicating with our friends or family. We go for, you know, we'll go for a casual one, like an informal kind of thing. So it requires a casual emotional tone. There are fewer formatting rules for informal letters than there are for business or formal letters. So there are few more, there are fewer formatting rules for informal letters, personal letters, than there are for business or formal letters. Business letters must be very crisp. The letter can be used for some reasons like, means a form, informal letters can be used for some reasons like conveying messages, news, giving advice, congratulating the recipient, requesting information, asking questions, etc. All these come in informal. Informal way of asking questions, informal way of congratulating a person, hug them and all. When we meet them, we hug them and all. That's informal actually. Conveying messages, giving advice and all. Giving a sister writing a letter to a brother, giving him some advice regarding how his studies must be, all those things. Letter format. Informal. I told you about formal. Informal. Address of the center. Now, where, sh where uh, all these must be kept? On the left hand side, right hand side, that I'll tell you after that. Just we'll see what all must be there in the format of an informal letter. Address of the center from address means your address, but not your name. Now, in the case of, uh, of an informal letter, a name is not compulsory in the address. Just the address is fine because the receiver will undoubtedly know who you are. So name, the name of the center is not compulsory in the case of an informal letter, but it's compulsory, it's required in the name of, uh, it's required in the case of uh, a formal letter. Your address, but not your name. Your address usually goes in the right, in the top right hand corner, I'll tell you that, but may go on the left. I said there are many formats actually. There are many formats for official letters or personal letters and personal letters. There are many formats. We'll go for only one format, the NCRT one. Your address, the sender's address, usually goes in the right top hand corner, but may go on the left too. So it can be the sender's address can be on the right hand side, top uh, right hand side, top right hand corner, or the left right hand, uh, or the top left uh, left hand corner is fine. So t the sender's address can be on the top right hand corner or top left hand corner date then greeting i'll tell you introductory paragraph greeting means like salutation introductory paragraph the introductory paragraph sets the tone for the whole letter now in fact when you write a letter or when you go for an essay also the introductory paragraph is very important in the case of an essay we'll go for it in detail in the case of an essay Reading the introductory paragraph, the evaluator or the reader should come to know, should get to know what all ideas you have based on that particular topic. That is, that is a must action. So all the details, all the ideas we have related to a particular topic must be, must be mentioned in the introductory paragraph. Don't uh, go for all those in detail, just mention. And in the body of an essay, you can uh, describe every idea. You can, uh, you can make one idea a paragraph. The introductory paragraph sets the tone for the whole letter. You might begin by asking the recipient about how him or her, about him or her, about his or her well-being. Means how are you and all. How are you? Hope you are fine. All this. So you might begin by asking the recipient about his or her well-being, how he or she is. Or you may say that you hope the letter finds him or her in good health. And great spirits. It means by the time you, you by the time you receive my letter, I hope that the time you read my letter, you are in good health and you are in great spirits. That means we are concerned about the person's well-being. The opening of informal letters should be casual and comforting. That means like it should be pleasing. 
and we have to go for in a casual manner not in a formal manner go for in a casual manner it means pleasing way actually comforting means like if you know hope if someone asks me how i am i'll feel happy because i'll have a feeling that he is concerned about my well being he is he is he is very much concerned about how i am means he wants to know how i am and all it pleases me actually it makes me feel happy so the opening of informal letters should be casual and comforting it must not be formal and direct as in as in business letters in business letters as you know for official letters be very formal very direct we directly move on to the issue we'll never ask the person uh, the director of a company how you are hope your family is good we'll never ask that all these things will never happen in the case of an official letter but these should happen in the case of <coughs> this can or these should happen in the case of an informal letter just to please that person just to make him aware that we are concerned about him. the opening of informal letters should be casual and comforting it must not be formal and direct as in business letters interactive paragraph then the body body means like uh, here <coughs> we divide into three parts interaction body conclusion in the body we can go for every point in detail doesn't matter body the conclusion then signature there is no way to sign off informal letters actually to end a letter yours you uh, this there's nothing like there's no need for to mention thank you also in the case of an informal letter but thank you is required in the case of a formal letter not in the case of an informal letter there's no way to sign off uh, informal letters i i can sign off the letter the way i want actually because it's my personal thing i'm writing going for a personal letter i'm writing a letter to my friend to one of my friends i'm writing a letter to a member of my family i'm writing a letter to a relative i'm writing a letter to a person who's very close to me to a girlfriend or boyfriend it depends on the way we want to end the letter it's my personal thing i can end the way i want so there's no specific way to end a personal letter actually there's no one way there's no one way to sign off to sign off to means sign out or to end informal letters to end a letter use yours sincerely yours lovingly if you have address a person by name so if you have address a person by name like dear sam dear ram and all if you have address a person by name you can end the letter this way use yours sincerely or yours lovingly if you have address a person by name yours faithfully if you have begin the letter with the dear sir or dear madam next now dear sir or dear madam can be used in the case of uh, a formal letter as well as an official and informal letter personal letter <coughs> so we can go for salutation this salutation dear sir or dear madam in the case of both personal letters that means informal letters and formal letters official letters i repeat there's no one way to sign of informal letters to end a letter use your sincerely or, or yours lovingly if you have address the person by name yours faithfully if you have begin the letter with dear sir or dear madam next so this is how the format of an informal letter must be address of the center can go on the top right hand corner or the top left hand corner date greeting the interactive paragraph the body the conclusion conclusion can be anything actually because there is no we are not urging we are not asking for any kind of action to be taken so we can conclude it the way we like signature <clears throat> there's no proper way of signing there's no specific way to sign off a uh, sign off an informal letter yours sincerely or lovingly if you address the person by name yours faithfully if you begin the letter with dear sir or dear madam next these are not that important fine you can follow any yours lovingly is fine yours sincerely yours yours faithfully is also fine now <clears throat> as there are many formats we'll go for one format we'll go for everything on the left hand side sender's address sender's address uh, i told you there's no comma required in the address date then salutation right you can go for anything dear don't write dear friend don't mention the word friend there instead of mentioning the word friend mention the name of the friend dear ram dear sam dear rahul kind of salutation comma paragraph 1 paragraph 2 paragraph 3 the content of the letter body now here make it's better you go for the letter in three paragraphs official formal or informal go for, better you go for it in three paragraphs make it three short paragraphs depending on the number of words you write the letter on here you know 150 words now as i told you in the case of a formal letter in the content of the letter or in the body of a formal letter no detail should go beyond the issue at hand 
Whereas no such rule is there in the case of a personal letter. It's an informal letter. In the case of an informal letter, as you know, undoubtedly, we should mention the topic at hand. That is for sure. Because we are asked to write a letter regarding a particular topic. So the topic that is given as a question must undoubtedly be mentioned. Apart from that, if you want to add any extra details regarding asking about his health, his education, all those details can be added in the case of a personal letter. There's nothing like nothing should go beyond the topic at hand. There must be proper, there must be ample information provided regarding the topic at hand, regarding the topic of the question. Apart from that, if we go for, if we want to go for some other details, also we can go for in the case of an informal letter, but not in the case of a formal letter. So make it into three short paragraphs, as that it depends on the number of words we write on. Then yours truly or yours lovingly or yours faithfully or sincerely, doesn't matter, comma, Writer's signature and signature means only. This much is fine in the case of formal letter. Sender's address, date, salutation, paragraph, the body of the letter, three paragraphs, salutation, comma, yours truly, comma, write, writer's name. That means writer's signature. We'll follow this pattern in the case of a formal, in the case of an informal letter. Now, we have discussed different ways of starting formal letters. We'll go for different ways of starting informal letters. There are no specific rules actually, still. It is with a heavy heart that I pen, pen means I write, in this case I write. It is with a heavy heart that I pen these few lines to condole. Now, if you are writing a letter to console a person, to give some relief to a person, or to make a person feel happy because of the, because if you feel that he is uh, in some kind of depression because of the, because of some kind of loss suffered by him, and if you want to console him or provide some kind of relief to him, in the case of such a topic, you can start the letter this way. It is with a heavy heart that I pen these few lines to condole or to console you regarding that thing. Losses happen to everyone and I wish to we wish my letter could provide some kind of uh, relief to you. So if it is such a question, you can begin the letter this way. Your father's untimely demise, death, has profoundly shocked me. In case you asked to write a letter to a friend who has lost his father recently, whose father died recently, you can start this way. Means I didn't, uh, I was shocked to hear such a news from you. I was shocked to hear such a news, the news regarding the death of your father, all those things. Your father's untimely demise, I mean, he is a person who should not have departed now, but it happened, depends on the fate, all those things. I was quite concerned to hear that you find it very difficult to dash. I was quite concerned to hear that you find it very difficult to. In case your friend has been trying hard to get something, to accomplish something, to accomplish something, that means if it is his ambition to accomplish something and even after many attempts he fail to get it or fail to achieve it and you feel like consoling him. Right? It was very, I was very concerned to hear that you find it very difficult. If I say, he is in a very pathetic situation. That means he finds it very difficult to make both ends meet. He finds it hard to earn a living. And even though uh, he has, uh, gone for, uh, has gone for a lot of efforts from your, his side, but still he has not achieved success. And he want to provide some kind of relief for him. You can say that. You can start the letter this way. I was quite concerned to hear that you find it very difficult too. That means, can I be of any kind of help to you? You have put all your efforts to achieve it, but you couldn't do it. And I'm very sorry to hear about it. And I wish to know whether I could be of any kind of help, help in uh, enabling you achieve what you want to achieve. Such kind of things. It was shocking to hear that a brave, intelligent girl like you is unable to dash. Imagine the friend is very brave. Now we don't know what kind of question, what the topic of the question is going to be. So we have to prepare it with you know, all kinds of questions. So keep practicing different kinds of situations. Like keep writing letters on different topics in fact. We'll, we'll, we'll go for those. It was shocking to hear that a brave, intelligent girl like you is unable to dash, unable to cope with all those things. You know, some things. If I say, I have always taken you as a very brave person, a very intelligent person. That means, imagine your friend is a person who does he or who always be strong. It means he never gives in, he never surrenders or gives up to any situation. 
Visible situation of friend faces, he or she will face the situation very bravely. They will face in a very courageous manner. But in one situation, your friend has collapsed. Friend has collapsed in the sense, she feels that she needs a helping hand. She was a person who was self-confident, who was very brave, very courageous, bold enough. She could stand on her own legs. But in one situation, your friend has collapsed. And you are a person, you being a very close person, very close person to your friend. And in that situation, you feel that you can be of, of you can be a person who can provide some kind of support to your friend. You feel that you can make your friend believe that you are a person who can be trusted, who is always there, who will always be there with her when she needs you. In such a situation, we can start in this way. It means we are we are telling her that we have that much of confidence in her. We have thought about her in such a way. It means we have thought her to be a very brave girl. And in such a situation, you just collapse. So I wish to be of any kind of, some kind of help to you. So it was, it was shocking to hear that a brave, intelligent girl like you is unable to cope with the particular situation or adjust to these situations. In the case of such a, in the case of such a question, you can start the letter this way. It's indeed been long since you wrote to me. It's a common one actually. When you write a letter, you know, it's been a long time. No, it's been a long time since we have communicated with each other. When we meet someone on the road, when, uh, a friend who, whom we have met long back, whom we met long back, means it's been a long time since we have met. It's been a long time since we have drank together. It's been a long time since we have stayed together. It's been a long time since we have made a, since we uh, made a trip. It's been a long time since we uh, went somewhere, all those things. It's indeed been long since you wrote to me. So, if you are writing a letter, if you are asked to write a letter to a friend whom you have not been touched with for a long time, you can start the letter this way. It's indeed been long since you wrote to me. I wish to know how you are and you can explain what you do these, what you are doing these days. You can ask your friend what he or she is doing these days, what his plans are. You can tell your friend what your plans are. All these can be gone for in the case of such a quest. It's indeed been long since you wrote to me. Then I am so excited that I feel I must share with you a piece of good news. Can you guess what it is? Yes, this annual day was great for me as Dash. Here, leave the rest, I'll come back to it. I am so excited that I feel I must share with you a piece of good news. You have achieved something. You have accomplished something. And you want to convey that good, that, that piece of good news to one of your friends or to, a, or to a friend who is very close to you. Then you can start the letter this way. Imagine you have cracked uh, the UPS examination. You have become an IAS officer, IPS officer. And this is a very good piece of news which you like to share with one of your best friends. And to share, uh, nowadays we don't write a letter, we immediately call or just, in a second, uh, just send a text message or immediately we will directly go and meet. When it comes to letter writing, we have to follow the norms of letter writing. So you have gone for, you have achieved something that you have long yearned for. You have achieved this, you have, made a, you have made a great accomplishment. And if you want to convey that good piece of news to one of your friends, you can start this way. I am so excited that I feel I must share with you a piece of good news. Can you guess what is? I mean, you can ask them what the good news is going to be. Make a guess. Anyway, uh, in the letter, he will not make a guess. We will just ask this and then we ourselves reveal it the same way. Yes, this annual day was great for me as, as I did, as I got the first prize in the dance competition, as I got the first prize in uh, the sports competition. I want to convey the space of, uh, this is a very, this annual day is something great for me and I wish to uh, convey this piece of good news with you and all. I want to share it with you. I want to convey this to you and all those things. So all these are what we can use to start a letter depending on the topic of the question. <clears throat> I repeat, in the case of something depressing, disappoint, something disappointing, it is with a heavy heart that I pen these few lines to condole. Then in the case of uh, a death in the family of your friend, death in the family of your friend, your father is untimely or any of your relatives, any of his, your friend's relatives, your father is untimely demise has profoundly shocked me. Then uh, when you find your friend is in a very difficult situation, I was quite concerned to hear that you find it very difficult to do such and such things and all. Then when you feel that your friend has collapsed once, has lost all, 
has lost his confidence, has lost all his confidence, has not been he's not being self-confident now and all, can start this way. It was shocking to hear that a brave, intelligent girl like you is unable to do such and such things. That if you have not uh, been in touch with your friend for a long time, isn't it been long since you wrote to me? If you want to convey a good piece of news to one of your friends, one of, your, uh, one of the persons who is very close to you, I am so excited that I feel I must share with you a piece of good news. So these are some of the ways in which we can start informal letters. We'll go for a sample informal letter. We'll read a question. As, as I said, you know, the, we have to write on the topic, undoubtedly. In addition to that, if you want, if you want, you can add some more details. Write a letter to your friend Shaitra, inviting her to spend the summer vacation at your place in Mumbai. You are inviting your friend Shaitra through the via the letter. You are inviting your friend Shaitra to spend the summer vacation at your place with you in Mumbai. You are Sakshi or Saksham, doesn't matter. <coughs> I told you the format, sender's address, date, salutation, the body of the letter, yours truly, yours lovingly, comma, then signature. Fine. 405, comma, Ablis Arcade. If you're going for Ablis Arcade in the next line, then this comma is not required. 405, comma, Ablis Arcade, Juhu, no comma, Mumbai, 40049. Sender's address, then date. 0 first, 1 ST is not required here. 0 1 is fine. March 2019. Dear Chaitra, friend, you can, call, you can call her by her name. Don't write dear friend, I told you. Don't mention the word friend in the salutation. Instead of mentioning the word friend, go for the name of the friend. Dear Chaitra, comma. So this matter must be talked about, must be written about. How have you been? Right. We are show, telling her that we are very much concerned about her. Or I am telling her that I am very much concerned about her. I, I think about her. I wish she, is in, she was in good health and all. I wish she were in good health. Or I wish uh, she could do... Ev she, she, I wish she did everything that made her feel happy and all. How have you been? I hope you are in the pink of your health. You are in the pink of your health means you are in good health. You are perfectly fine. I hope you are in the pink of your health when this reaches you. This means this letter. So the time you read this letter, I feel that you are in good health, in great spirits. Mother and father happy and healthy. Mother and father means my mother and father. My is not required here, it's understood. I am telling about my parents, I am asking how our parents are. Mother and father happy and healthy. I believe aunt and... I will go for a call, full stop here. Mother and father happy and healthy. I believe aunt and uncle too are sailing the boat of health and happiness. So my parents are happy. I'm asking about her parents. I believe that your parents too, aunt and uncle means her parents here, are sailing the boat of health and happiness. Are sailing the boat of health and happiness means they are in good, they're in good health. They are really happy the way they lead their life. So here a concern about the friend and then concern about her family and just telling her how my family is. We are just moving on to first paragraph is enough. We are just moving on to the second paragraph. We have, we have gone for four paragraphs. Depending on you, we can make three paragraphs, four paragraphs. It depends on you only. Based, but we should think about the number of words, the word limit action. The, the words uh, that we should not cross, the limit of words we should not cross, depending on the question. As summer breaks are approaching, I am hoping to have a trip to Meghalaya together. We are inviting her to spend the summer vacation at your place in Mumbai. Means again, uh, there you can make a trip as well. It depends on you. As uh, summer breaks, the uh, summer breaks separate. I mean, you can come to Mumbai. You can be with us. We can make a trip as well. I am hoping to have a trip to Meghalaya together. This trip would last for a week, and two of my friends would join us in this endeavor in this trip. This trip would give us new experiences, perspectives, and a break from monotonic life we have now. Montanic life means like uh, the mountainous life, the, the life that we lead, the boring, dull, uninteresting, inactive life, routine thing. So here yeah, we are asking her to spend, uh, I'm asking her, my friend to spend the summer vacation with me. And what I'm planning to do in the summer vacation is what I'm telling her. We are planning, I'm planning a trip to Meghali with some friends. I hope you would join me in the trip as well. So come with me, be with me, we can make a trip. I would be immensely happy if you would bring aunt and uncle to. It means if you bring your parents to, I'll be really happy. 
That means it increase that adds to my happiness. I said beginning add details apart from what is there given as topic of the question. It depends on us in the case of an informal lit. I would be immensely happy if you would bring aunt and uncle to. It would be a cherry on the cake if they visit. It be a cherry on the cake means it adds to my happiness if they too accompany you to my place. It has been long since our parents met. That means it's been long since my parents met your parents. And I believe it will be great to have our families form a strong bond as we strengthen our friendship. So come and stay with me for some days. We can go on a trip. We meet. It, it strengthens our friendship. Our parents meet after a long time. So it strengthens the bond. The trip strengthens the bond. Or your visit strengthens the bond between your parents and my parents as well. It strengthens our friendship. It strengthens the bond between your parents and my parents as well. That's the reason I'm inviting her. I'm asking her to bring her parents too. It will be like a uh, gathering after a long time. Now, the last paragraph here. I hope you are excited about this trip as much as I am. That means I am very much excited about this trip. I hope you too are excited the same way I am. This, uh, you too are excited the same way as I am. Looking forward to spending this summer vacation. It means in the last paragraph, in the concluding paragraph, we express our wish. We stress on our wish or what we hope must be mentioned. It's like we tell us, we tell her what the matter is. At the end, we believe that or we hope that she does as per our wish or she does what, what we wish her to do. I hope you're excited about this trip as much as I am. Looking forward to spending the summer vacation with you. It means I'm waiting your arrival. I await your reply. Pay my regards to Aunt Anne. It means I'm waiting for a reply from you. Pay my regards means convey my regards to Aunt Anne. So in the informal letter, personal letter, we start with how she is, right? Means showing a concern for her. We asked about her parents. I told her, I'm taking like uh, Chaitra as myself right, for the time being. So I'm telling her how my parents are. I asked how her parents were. And I told her the matter. I, I Apart from that, I asked her to bring her parents to which would strengthen the bond between her parents and my parents, the visit. Then I said, uh, I told her about the trip, how the trip is going to be. I invite her parents to. In the last part, in the concluding paragraph, I expressed my wish that she would be with me this summer vacation and that she would spend her time with me this summer vacation. So our hope or a belief, what we want her to do, means what our wish is or what we expect her to do must be stressed in the concluding paragraph. Yours lovingly, comma, friend, right? Lovingly is completely fine. Sakshi or Sakshin depends on you. So sender's address. Date, salutation, the body of the letter, you can add extra details as well depending on the word limit. Yours lovingly, comma, then name. Name is taken as signation. Got it? So this is how an informal letter must be. Some points to remember, some points to be kept in mind while writing letters. The date and the signature are very important letters. Date is important, signature is also important. Signature is sincere, name is completely fine. In a formal letter, in a, in a formal letter, the signature is compulsory. In the informal letter, even if you forget, it's okay. But better you keep it. We do not use commas after every line in the address. I told you this. After every line in the address, comma is not required. If two words are in the same line, then a comma is required. Is you keep a comma to separate the two words. That's it. Do not begin your letters with expressions like, with reference to your letter dated 10th January. So don't start letter this way actually because uh, with reference to your letter dated 10th January means based on the letter that you sent me or that means that you have wrote, written me written written for me written to me on 10th January such expressions should not be used to start a letter instead use personalized personalized variations like I was glad to receive your letter of 10th January now I am writing this letter. As a, uh, as a response letter to the letter that you have sent, that you've already sent me, may be a bit, may sound a bit rude. I told you, uh, personal letters must be very comforting. Right? It must be very comforting. I already read it somewhere. Yes, the opening of informal letters should be casual and comforting. Means while when the person when the person starts reading the letter itself, he should have a smile on his face. That means we should make make sure that. He feels happy at the time when he starts reading the letter itself. So do not begin that, you know, I'm writing this letter because you sent a letter, because you have sent a letter to me. As you have sent a letter to me, I'm writing this letter back to you. That's, that should not be used. It doesn't feel comforting. 
doesn't sound comforting. Instead, you can start this way. I was glad to receive your letter of 10 January. Means I was very happy to receive a letter. So I wish to, so I felt like writing a letter back to you. Your letter made me feel happy. So I thought of making you feel happy with my letter. Or we were happy to note from a letter that the goods have reached you safely. Means like a response letter. Now if you have sent some goods to that person and the, the person has sent a letter to you telling you that, informing you that he has received what you have sent. And to the reply to the, of the, to, as a reply to the letter that he has sent you, if you are going for a letter, then you can start this way. We were happy to note from your letter that the goods have reached you safely. It means we are very happy to know that the goods that we have sent you have reached you safe. Never end your letters with hanging participles. I told you this, like ing form, never use it. Never use, end the letter with thanking you. Usually we end a letter with an official letter with thank you, with say, writing thanking you. But better don't go for thanking you. Instead, write, just write thank you. So never end your letters with hanging participles. These ing forms are called hanging participles here. Thanking you or awaiting a reply. So never end a letter this way. Thanking you, awaiting a reply. Instead, write thank you. Thank you, I said. Or we await. For, we await your reply. We look forward to reply. These are the best ways to end a letter. So never go for thanking you, awaiting your reply. Instead, thank you. We await your reply. We look forward to reply. These are fine. Never fill imagined information into the letter. Fill only what is mentioned in the question. Especially in the case of an official letter. Especially in the case of an official letter. Formal letter. Never fill any imagined information or go only for information that is mentioned there. In formal letter, we just asked about her dad as well. All those extra information, right? Asking her how she is and all that. Those must be there in the case of informal letter. But never in the case of a formal letter. So these are some points to be kept in mind while writing letters. The date and signature are very important letters. We do not use commas after every line of the address. Do not begin letters with expressions like with reference to your letter date 10th January. Instead use personalized variations like I was glad to receive a letter of 10th January. Or we are happy to uh, note from a letter that the goods have reached you safely. Never end your letter with hanging participles like thanking you, awaiting your reply and all. Instead go for thank you, we await your reply, we look forward to your reply. And never go for imaginary information, especially in the case of formal letters. So these are some things to be kept in mind while writing letters. So we'll go for uh, some examples, formal letters uh, and informal letters. Uh, then we'll start with, uh, we'll go for something like essay writing as well in detail. Some tips to be kept in mind while going for essay writing as well. Then we'll go for, move on to something on application, application writing and pressure writing. Clear? So these are the points to be kept in mind while going for letters. Thank you.